What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen and in this Tackle Tuesday, I'm going to talk about the tackle that I like to use when I'm bait fishing. Alright, first of all, before we get started, all the tackle and all the rods that I show in this video are going to be uh, linked down in the description to Tackle Warehouse. It is my affiliate link, just so you guys know. But when I'm choosing tackle to go bank fishing, my number one priority is I don't want to get snagged up a bunch because it is so difficult to get a lure unsnagged out in the water when you're standing on the bank. And so I choose lures accordingly and I want some that'll fish wood, wood good. I want some that'll fish the grass good. I want some that'll fish out of the silt that you find in a lot of small farm ponds. Um, and so that's the kind of tackle that I used. So to start with, the first one that always comes to mind is a small spinnerbait. What I've got here is I've got a Strike King uh, Little Red Eye Special. I've had this one hanging on my peg in my barn for a while. I always have three or four of them. But I love the small spinnerbaits. It, it, they just catch every fish out there. The, big bass the little bass and they can cover a lot of water go through go through thick cover really really well and I fish this on just a medium action bait caster or a medium spinning rod you can do either one uh, 10 12 15 pound line just about anything but the biggest thing is is once you get bit be sure you set the hook to the side good and hard and have fun fighting the fish but a nice little small spinner bait is perfect for that all right so continuing on with the, the search baits, the moving baits, the ones I like to cover a lot of water to try to find the fish. One of my favorites has got to be, or has now become, it wasn't, as, it wasn't always, but it, it's a swim jig. A swim jig comes through cover very, very well. Doesn't get hung up hardly at all. The bass bite the heck out of it. Um, and it's just a whole lot of fun to fish. I'll leave a link up, the, up here for, uh, for how to fish a swim jig. But what I've got here is I've got a green fish tackle swim jig and green pumpkin and brown, I guess, whatever. But uh, not really worried about the color. But I, I always pair it with a good trailer, a trailer that matches the bait. This is a Strike King Rage Tail Menace. And one of my tricks is I like to, instead of leaving it twin tail like this, which you can, and it looks like a bluegill swimming, but I like to downsize it just a little bit and just rip that top one off and it swims real, real tight and it looks like a smaller bait fish just by removing that tail. Another good trailer is like a, a any kind of a paddle tail swim bait. This is a, uh, oh, I got it right here, hold on, Strike King Rage Swimmer. Uh, and in about a three and a three quarter ounce length, not too long. And like I said, you just throw it out, fish it on a medium, heavy rod uh, or a medium rod but a medium heavy is usually pretty usually best because you're getting it out of getting fish out of thick cover but cast it out reel it in bump it off a of cover run it through stuff and you'll be amazed what you can catch on this and you can cover a lot of water and find the fish when uh, a lot of times it's just difficult all right so this one has become a staple in whether i'm boat fishing or kayak fishing or anything but a, a bladed jig this is a thunder cricket from strike king but i also use uh z-man's chatter baits and uh, and I just love them. They come through cover pretty good. They do not come through wood very well. What happens is as you're swimming them along, the blade will come up over top of a piece of wood. And as you get to right here, it rolls over and the hook grabs the piece of wood and you get hung up. So I would avoid throwing it around wood. Grass, it's perfect. Just bare bottoms, it's perfect. It's just really, really a good bait that catches giant fish. What I like to pair it with is some type of a paddle tail swim bait or a fluke style bait. And you just thread it on there and, and throw it out on a medium heavy or a me, medium heavy moderate is an ideal rod, but you can throw it on a medium heavy jig rod or a medium action rod and be just fine. And, uh, and just have fun with it. Throw it out, let it sink to the bottom, slowly reel it off the bottom, start to feel that vibration and just hold on tight because it catches big fish. But a bladed, big, bladed jig needs to be something you keep in your tackle box. All right, so I want you guys to notice something that I've, so far, you've seen a lot, you've seen a few baits, but you've noticed the color uh, choice, and I did that on purpose. Most small ponds, things like that, the main forage fish, the main fish that they like to eat are bluegill. So you don't see a lot of shad patterns in my, uh, in my bank fishing arsenal, per se. 
you see a lot of bluegill patterns and a lot of smaller, smaller baits to match the little minnows that are on the bank and things like that. But this one, you cannot go anywhere without thinking about this one. This is a fish, fish catching machine. And basically what this is, this is an Ocho. This is a Strike King Ocho, but a Cinco style bait, like the Gary Yamamoto Cinco is something that you, if you've got to catch fish and you're in a, in a great lake with big fish that's for some reason aren't biting or whatever, if you just got to catch fish, throw a Cinco. And I'm gonna show you how I rig it. I'm gonna throw this over on the tailgate of my truck. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I rig it when I'm fishing farm ponds, completely weightless. Get yourself an extra wide gap uh, worm hook. And then you just thread it down through, over. Bring the eye of the hook partially through and twist it around so it sits like this. And you lay it along the side I mark it with my finger to see where it's got to go in and then I go straight to that spot, go straight across, and then I skin hook it. And I want you to look, let me hold it tight, look and see how I skin the tip through just like this. You see that? And that's how I rig it, completely and totally weightless. I throw it on a medium action bait caster or a spinning rod, doesn't really matter, and set the hook hard when that fish bites and you'll get them in. I mean, a Cinco can go anywhere and you will you can ask anybody. That's probably the biggest fish catching machine of the last 20 years has been a bait just like this, some type of a stick bait. All right, so the next one is another one of those that go come through any type of a cover. And I love to swim this like a crankbait. And I kind of use it in, in lieu of a crankbait because crankbaits get hung up so much. But it is the new 13 fishing joystick. And I started fishing this last year and it really does come through cover, but you have to rig it right. But uh, it's a swim worm is what it is. Let me drop that down right there. It's got two little paddle tails or two little kick tails is what they are. They're called what rabbit ears or whatever. I don't know what, I guess that's what 13 calls them. Just a great little worm. And I, I rig it the same way I do a Cinco. A lot of people call this Texas rigging. I call it weightless or reading it, rigging it weedless. Extra wide gap hook, same thing. Okay, so it's sitting like that, but instead I add a little bitty bullet weight. And this one's almost too big, but I didn't bring my terminal tackle with me, so we're gonna use what's on the rod. But I like an eighth ounce, and this is a quarter ounce. I like an eighth ounce uh, bullet weight. Lead, tungsten, it doesn't really matter. You throw it out, you let it sink to the bottom or sink till it stops, and then slowly start reeling it through and around the cover. Let it bump off the grass, gets hung. You can All you have to do is just shake your rod a little bit and it pops out wood anything and it comes through and the only thing to remember when you're doing this is uh, when you're swimming any soft plastic one of the tricks to always get a good hook set is to once you feel the bite drop your rod for a second count two seconds or so and then set the hook for some reason you'll lose a lot less fish if you do that but if you set the hook right away most of the time you're going to jerk it right out of the fish's mouth so i love fishing a swimming worm and <laughs> I mean, anytime I see grass, scattered grass, stuff like that, this is one of the things I definitely go to. Match your color to the uh, clarity of the water and go out there and catch them. All right, so this is the one I always talk about. Whenever we talk about bank fishing and people having a hard time finding or catching fish from the bank, I always recommend a Z-Man Ned Rig. And the reason I do this is because it catches anything I've caught catfish, walleye, pike, I mean bass, smallmouth, all kinds of stuff on a Ned rig. And I'm going to real quick show you how I, I rig it. But the uh, when I'm fishing from the bank, in order to, st to stay as snagless as possible, because a normal Ned rig will get snagged really, really bad, is I use the weedless shrooms hook or a jig head. And it's got the two little wires on it. And the, the they're good and bad. They're really good because they keep you from getting snagged but it really sometimes it'll impede the hook set so you got to make sure you fish it on a medium action rod typically i would fish a ned rig on a medium light but a medium action spinning rod is what i'm going to throw this on just so i can get a heavier harder hook set to 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 try to combat the difficulty of getting a hook set with those two weed guards they just tend to get in the way when the fish clamps his mouth first thing you do when you get them out of the out of the package is you separate these wires they're going to come really close together you separate them and I want them to look just like this. I'm gonna come real close to the camera to show you. All right, you see that right there? See how I've got them separated, the hook straight down the center? 
It's not always gonna stay that way. As you get bit, those wires will get bent up, but you can straighten those wires out pretty easy. Now, the way I rig them, is I've got the Finesse TRD. Okay, little bitty small TRD. And it's plain and simple. You just put that sucker right there just like this. Run it down just a little bit and pull it out. Cram it up onto that head. And that's all it is. And believe it or not, that thing catches the crap out of fish. I don't know what it is. As ugly as this thing is, it catches fish. So that is what you need to have with you whenever you're, you need to get a bite. My favorite way to fish it on a farm pond, remember you've got issues with silt and things like that. So what I do with silt is I'll throw it out, I'll let it sink to the bottom. As Soon as it hits the bottom, I engage the reel and I start to reel really, really fast so that bait just barely comes off the bottom and it just swims right along the top of that silt. And then I shake the end of my rod just a little bit to give it some action as it's swimming and the fish annihilate it. Just fish it like a crankbait. Not one of those things, see a lot of times in, a, in silty water, if you bounce, hop things, and when they land, they sink down in the silt and the bass can't get to them and they're not gonna bite them. So really good bait to fish in, in small little ponds when you're standing on the bank. All right, last but not least, the funnest bait to fish, no matter what you're standing on, I think is a topwater frog, okay? And they are just a blast. The fish crush them when they're shallow and active and it's just so much fun to get a, get a topwater bite. And they're completely weedless for the most part. You can find a way to snag them, believe me. But this is a Trash Panda from 13. This is one of my favorites. I had a lot to do with the design, so I'm very partial with it. But, uh, but I also use the, uh, the, Spro, uh, the Spro Frog or the, the Booyah Frog. Um, there's a couple other ones I never can remember the name of. The Scum Frogs are the other ones that I use. But the biggest thing is, is how you fish it. You want to fish it on a heavy action rod with braid. You want 65 pound, maybe 50 pound braid, nothing lighter, mainly because of the type of hook set you've got to give to that fish. When that fish bites, you've got to hammer it. You've got to act like you're swinging a baseball bat and trying to hit a home run because it, it, that's just what it takes to crush that frog, to get that hook around the, back, the end of the fish's mouth. And, um, and you really got to have the right right rod and the right reel and the right uh, the right line set. If the reel is eight one to one gear ratio reel, mainly because a lot of times you want to be able to get the line back to you really fast, or you want to be able to turn a fish that's in really really thick cover, and you've got to reel down real fast to get it up. But I like two types of frogs. I like a walking frog and I like a popping frog. Either one, I just try them until the bass figure, until the bass tell me what they want. But the biggest thing is that hook set and the and your equipment. But Pick one of these up, man. I'm telling you, the blow up from a topwater frog from a big bass, once you get one, you will be hooked for life. It's small. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> There's a good pond fish. There's a good pond fish. I'm telling you, Ned Rick's catch everything. <sighs> Poor fella. He's <laughs> enjoying it. <laughs> Good one. For this one. Swelling them up in here. Nice. Dang, they're getting bigger in this pond. <laughs> Look at that. Gosh, this one. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Not half shabby. Hey, that's a good one. Yeah. Nice little pond bass. Look at that. Dang, they're getting so much better. <laughs> There's nothing like having some fun little baits that'll catch anything in a small pond. Not a bad one. This lake's getting healthier and healthier every single year. Well, come on, get out of grass. Figure out you're released. Come on, go. <laughs> there he goes. But anyway, well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, everything's linked down in the description. But like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish, and have a great day. We'll see you.